Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Vladimir Osechkin. He is the founder of Gulagu.net, an NGO he founded a decade ago to document the abuses of the prison system in Russia, Gulagu being, of course, a reference to the Soviet-era Gulag. His advocacy has forced him to leave Russia. He lives in exile in France since 2015, and he joins us from uh, Biarritz in the southwest of France. Thank you very much for being with us. Hello, Mark, and I would like to welcome all your subscribers and your listeners. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, you live in France, however, you live under police protection. Last September, you were the target of an assassination uh, attempt. Uh, can you tell us what happened? If I understand, you were cooking dinner for your wife and your children. Yes, twice last year, there were attempts on my life, and the Russian special services are involved in that, and they tried to organize my liquidation to obstruct the work of our human rights project. It's obvious that what we are doing, we are revealing the system of human rights violations, the torture system, and the participation of everyone in the uh, prison system and the prisoners of war kept in this prison base in Russia. All of this irritates Putin and is disturbing the Russian secret services. They're afraid of consequences and the fact that the international uh, scene will un and the world will learn about them and then they will have to face the international criminal court. I, I cannot give you all the details. This is uh, the secret of the investigation. A criminal case has been uh, opened, and I am a victim in this case, and many law enforcement agencies under various articles here in France are involved in this, and I can express openly my gratitude to France for the protection of the law enforcement agencies, because if they had not intervened, if I did not get this protection from the state, I would probably no longer be alive today, and I would not be able to continue doing what I have been doing together with my colleagues for in the New Dissidents Foundation and Gulagu Net. Uh, so for years, uh, you've documented uh, a wide range of uh, abuses, especially sexual abuse in the uh, Russian system prison system. Uh, since the onset of the war in Ukraine, uh, you helped dozens of uh, Russian soldiers as well as mercenaries from the Wagner Group escape. Uh, so I, I guess you must have a good picture of a phenomenon that's often talked about, but uh, there's very, very little facts behind this. Uh, the uh, Ukrainian prisoners brought into Russia. Do you know how many of them are they uh, treated in a specific way? Can you tell us what information you've been able to gather on this issue? It's very important that we talk about this. This is exactly what I spoke about at the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe on the 22nd of March. I gave very specific information about what we know. What we know is that we're in a new reality. If up until 2020, we were telling the world about this torture system in Russia and the systematic rape in Russian uh, jails with videotapes to intimidate the uh, inmates. We thought this was the worst we could ever see and reveal, but beginning 24 February 2022, we have found ourselves in a more horrifying reality. And beginning in March of 2022, in the jail system, our informers tell us that on the basis of over 10 FSIN uh, buildings. This is a newly formed concentration camp with law enforcement and the defense industry and the prisoners of war and even captives among civilians from Ukraine have been placed into jails. They are deemed 
people who are obstructing the conducting of the special military operation in Russia. They have this vile name for it to uh, address the uh, Ukrainians who simply want to protect their own homes and they want to inform their people like us who want to inform of what the Russians are doing without any basis. This is a flagrant violation of international law. These Ukrainians have been placed into uh, to Russian prisons, but the lawlessness didn't end there. We have a lot of material from people who are working in the penitentiary system. Two of them are two former FSIN employees who have left the territory of the Russian Federation and have given us detailed testimony. So we know how the fighters of the special forces of the FSIN, these are people in masks to hide their faces, who are specially trained to storm in order, in order to supposedly free hostages with special weapons under the leadership of their bosses. They use cruel and inhuman methods to be and torture Ukrainian prisoners of war. And we are fully certain, having looked at the testimony of those who have left this penitentiary system and having looked at the documents that the sources have sent us, that this is a system, it's a system that has been created by the state and all the power structures like the FSB and the Defense Ministry know perfectly well what they're doing. There's, the commands are from on high, torture, dictated, saying that they must in some way break the will of the prisoners of war, force them to obey, sing the Russian national anthem, use a certain salute to praise Putin, and there is a certain uh, number of people who then have confessed to being Nazis under torture, saying that they are, there is indeed a Nazi regime in Ukraine. So the Russian special forces themselves have transformed into what looks a lot like the Gestapo and the SS and the Third Reich. They use torture on citizens, on civilians, in order to have them confess. Revealing all of this must become one of the major topics of international investigations with regard to criminal cases and to show their involvement in this. Uh, uh, Vladimir, uh, uh, quickly, if you can, uh, what about Wagner? I mean, uh, we know they've recruited in Russian uh, prisons. Uh, some are saying that they're acting on their own. Others are saying they're acting under uh, Putin. What is your uh, reading of uh, what they're doing? That is yet another inhuman scheme organized by the Putin regime. It began in June 2022, and our human rights project Gulagu has begun to work on this. We've been begun, uh, receiving information that this oligarch Prigozhin and the secret services with their colonels and generals on Putin's instruction and approval recruit, they've been working on recruiting over 40,000 inmates. They created unbearable conditions in jails, and then they began to lure them to the war, sending them to these coordinating camps so that they, in groups, would participate in attacks on the Ukrainian armed forces. And we know that they have introduced practices from Stalin's time. They have executed people who do not want to fight Ukraine. So when the Russian authorities say that this is a war of volunteers against a regime, that in itself is a war crime. They are afraid of dying, being tortured, and these inmates are being forced to participate in this military aggression against the Ukraine. 
Ukrainian armed forces. And we have a lot of evidence on this topic. For the first two months, it was difficult to publish this information. Many said this cannot be, this is just made up, it's utopia, it's just fake news. But now many, many journalists working with us are now convinced that this is indeed credible information and Putin has decided to become the new Stalin in the spirit of a gulag of the 21st century and uh, pushing these inmates to head to war. Uh, I know you've, you've probed a lot of the prison system in Russia. I want to ask you about a famous prisoner, Alexei Navalny. He is now in the high security prison of Melekhovo, known as IK-6. Uh, from the information you, uh, you have, do you know more about his conditions and how this uh, prison is uh, in real life. Yes, indeed. We have a lot of information about the situation in the IK-6 prison where Navalny, among others, is being detained. We know that uh, he's being abused. One of our insiders sent us more than uh, four gigabytes of photographs and uh, documents showing that the administration on instructions from Moscow has uh, decided to have totalitarian control of Alexei so that every move he makes is monitored. He cannot even remain for a minute without any video monitoring, without the FSIN or other services monitoring him. He's psychologically put under pressure, and they're trying to break him psychologically in order to break his will. He is regularly put into the solitary confinement cells in order to worsen his situation. So it's a jail within a jail in a very small cell. Moreover, they are giving him or creating conflictual situations for him and creating ba basically conditions of torture. We even have evidence that the Russian secret services have set up um, the uh, wiretap of the office where he meets with his lawyer. So his own lawyer cannot discuss things properly to work out a line of defense without the FSB and others learning about what they're doing. This is a flagrant violation of what's happening in IK-6, just as has been happening in neighboring penal colonies and the special services give instructions to beat or kill. In IK-6, one prisoner was um, tortured and his anus was torn. These sadists are very close to Alexei Navalny, and the worst is that at any time, if Putin gives the order, the worst imaginable could happen to Alexei Navalny. Only the pressure from the international press and international political leaders is saving him from that for the time being. Vladimir Osechkin, founder of Gulagu.net, I want to thank you very much for appearing here on the France 24 interview and thank you all for watching it.